What's up guys, Jivin back with another video. So yesterday was the first solo cash cup of the season. And so in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down everything I learned in this first week. We're going to be going over all the solo cash cup meta stuff, such as rotations, taking high ground, some money plays that can win you games, whether you should be keying or not keying, and how you can improve for next week if you didn't do too hot this week. Before we get into it, please consider using code Jivin TV in the item shop. It really does help me out a ton. Without further ado, let's get into this video. First off, I just want to say sorry the quality isn't the best. My recording got messed up, so I had to clip it from the stream, which is low quality. But let's start off with your first game. Should you be keying or nah? The answer is it can really work either way. There were lots of top placing players that keyed their first games and a lot of top placing players that did not. So what I recommend is just play off your strengths. If you're not the best W keyer in cash cups, then that's fine. Just play for consistency. Try to get top five every game, catch a few dubs, and you can still earn money. I, for one, am not the best keyer when it comes to cash cups, but something to keep in mind is after all of my games were over, I still had three extra games. So I could have easily W keyed my first game and had tons of extra games at the end. So next week, I might go for a W key game to start it off. Overall though, you're gonna wanna be playing for the placement points because 30 points for a win, that's just crazy. Think about it, 30 kills is equal to one win. So getting those wins is definitely the money prize. If you struggled to make it to late game a lot in this tourney, I have a couple pieces of advice for you. First piece of advice is work on your drop spot. Something to keep in mind is that a lot of outskirt spots are actually really contested during cash cups, which you probably realized this first week if you were landing at an outskirt spot. The reason is everybody has the same mindset. We gotta play it safe, we gotta make it to late game because this tourney is placement based. So a lot of people end up just going outskirt spots and a lot of POIs are actually less contested during these. So one tip I have for you is that you can either high drop an outskirt spot. What this means is pull out your glider early to an outskirt spot that has a lot of different locations nearby. And then that way you can kind of see where everybody around you is landing and you can try to find an uncontested drop spot and rotate from there based on where the other players are. This is actually what I did. I just landed high over Holly Hedges, and if Holly was really contested, I would dip out of there and go to an outskirts spot nearby that I saw was uncontested. But when I saw Holly contested by only one person, I would land on the opposite side of that player. He say he lands on the north side of Holly, I'll land on the south side, and I would split Holly with that other player and then dip out of there before I have to fight them. Because my goal was to rotate early, avoid fights, and set myself up for late game every single game. And it worked. The reason I didn't place too hot in this tourney was simply because I hadn't played any end games in a while. I haven't scrimmed at all this season. But I made it to end game every single game. So if I could just touch up my late game a little bit, I could have been in the cash. I must have cost myself around 50 late game points just by making stupid mistakes. That could have easily been avoided. So yeah, that strategy helped me get to late game very often. I must have only had a few mid game fights, like maybe two or three throughout the entire tourney, except in my W key game because I was just pushing people. Another super important thing for making it to late game often is using cars to get deep into the zone and based up early on. Cars get you across the map so much, so you wanna add cars into your loot route. Where are cars gonna be? You get to it fast, you get across the map, and boom, you're chilling. Another really important thing is being able to predict zones. If you can get a general idea of where a zone is gonna pull, get there before even first zone closes, and then you just chill there and keep pulling zone over and over, you'll be big chilling. The general way I predict zones is if I see it pull really far in one direction, usually it's gonna pull in that direction again. So I base myself up, say the zone pulls far to the north, I'll base up on the northern side of the map and almost all of these games I pulled first, second, third, and fourth zone simply by using this prediction method. Also, if the zone pulls straight to the center of the map, then usually it's gonna pull to the center again. That's kind of how zones work in Fortnite. It's not a perfect math, but you can pull zones like, I don't know, five times out of six if you do this method. And if you have a car next to you and zone doesn't pull to you, you just hop back in your car and get to the center of the second zone. You know what I mean? So that's how I made it to late game pretty much every single game, just by rotating early, predicting zone rotates, and planning my next rotate ahead of time. 
For example, in my third game here, notice how I was based up on the edge of zone. I stayed in this box for two whole zones, even though zone pulled far, I didn't rotate immediately, I was waiting to hit this launch pad and fly to the center of the next zone. I had planned this rotate out ahead of time, there were a lot of players around me so I was being patient with it, I was waiting until I saw a free opportunity to hit it, and then I had a perfect rotate to the center of the zone. And then sure enough I pulled the next like three zones straight to me. So let's take a look at this game because this was the one game that I won. I played this one out really smart so let's break it down and then we're going to get into some ways that you can learn from your own cash cup experience to improve next week. So in the first moving zone here I was just staying ahead. I knew I had a launch pad but zone pulled in a pretty safe direction for me to rotate by foot so I did that and saved my launch pad for later. I took a little storm damage getting perfect positioning here and then somebody actually pushed me from above and there was no reason for me to take that fight because I still had a launch pad and decent mats so I just rotated away from that guy. Next zone pulled far away from me and I still had this launch pad so I just decided to look for a safe place to launch. I made sure to check my top before using it, saw it was free and hit it. So at this point I'm on front edge of zone in a good place to look for a refresh. I go for a play from above on this guy but it didn't really work out. Lucky for me, I saw some loot next to me. When going for loot in late game like this, you want to make sure you block your angles while trying to get it, so I just got what I could, and then I just immediately continued my rotate in, blocking my back while also conserving mats. Doing this floor ramp method is really good if you can get to the front edge of zone and just do floors and ramps, that can save you a lot of builds. And then again, we look for a quick refresh once we get into the zone. Because once you get down to like 300, 200 mats, something like that, you want to be looking for a refresh right away. This was the one mistake of the whole tournament. I wasn't paying attention enough to my mats. This is most likely because I haven't run any scrims all season. But next week, every single late game, I'm just going to be reminding myself to check my mats like crazy. Lucky for me though, I played this really well with no mats. I broke into a safe part of this guy's tarp here on the left and just played sneaky on the back edge of zone. I had a chug cannon so I could take some storm damage and I was able to just jump this guy and I had that tack. That tack is nasty in late game, man. I gotta get moving right after I get that kill. So I just healed up with the chug and then swapped mine for his and got a move on. While I was ramping up here, it was a little bit sketchy. I maybe should have gone to the right another box, but I got in a 50-50 with this guy and I had the tack, so I was able to win that even though I whiffed so many shots. That's one of my biggest issues, bro. When I'm in late game, my shots get so flicky. I just gotta keep my cool. If you're the same way, we just gotta get better at breathing in late game, man. It's all about keeping composure and maintaining that adrenaline, basically. Anyways, I was able to rotate around all these builds, get to the front edge of zone with so many mats, and I had five launch pads. If you have a launch pad this late in game, you have good mats, you need to launch to height. And that's what I did here. I looked straight up, made sure there was nothing blocking me, and then I was able to take high ground from these guys. I played confidently because I knew I had a lot of mats, and once I got high ground, it was basically a GG's, man. High ground is so OP in solos because everybody else is shambles on low ground fighting it out, but if you're on high ground, you're just straight chilling while everybody else is in the chaos. Main thing is, if you're on high ground in late game like this, don't drop down. I dropped down for a second, but then I was like, what am I doing? I'm going to go back up. Six points for a dub? <laughs> I don't even care about the kill, bro. And so he just ended up dying in storm. Free W from me. Let's go, baby. So yeah, that was my best game of the tourney, but now we're going to talk about how you can improve for next week. The first thing is you want to identify where in your games were you going wrong. Whether it be dying off spawn a lot, dying in mid game a lot, or dying early on in the late games. Once you identify which one of those was your problem, you want to figure out how you can work around that for next week. Figure out a plan that can help you overcome it. For example, if you're dying in early game a lot, maybe it's your drop spot. Maybe you want to try out some of the stuff I was talking about earlier on in this video, such as rotating early with cars, high dropping at a location that has a lot of different loot paths around it. That way you can find an uncontested drop spot. Or just center in and practice in arena and scrims one drop spot specifically and just keep practicing it over and over again throughout the next week so you're ready for the next cash cup. If you're dying in mid game a lot, perhaps it's your positioning. See if you are positioning yourself in bad spots such as on edge of zone, rotating a little bit too late in the game, and study the mid game fights that you lost. See how you could have done better in the next fight and practice in arena a lot with your mid game fighting. And then if you had trouble in late game just like I did, study your late games and see how you could have rotated better. Maybe there was some lack of awareness going on such as a lack of attention to your mats 
a lack of attention to where players are around you, stuff like that can help you get better for the next week. And then the last biggest thing that'll help you out for next week is VOD Review, a pro that did well and posted their highlights on YouTube, or maybe they have stream highlights that you can go watch on Twitch. I'm gonna be VOD reviewing pros before every single cash cup for the rest of the season. I'll be posting my VOD reviews of them on YouTube. I did it last season and you guys seem to like it a lot, so we'll keep that going this season as well. Now last part of this video, I'm just gonna VOD review two of my late games. That way you guys can kind of get an understanding of how to do it yourselves. So first off, in this late game, what I did wrong was landing on high ground here. It was a complete accident, but I should have avoided that by flying a little bit more wide. When I landed on late game with that low amount of mats and low HP, I really left myself no options. But if I would have landed on front side of low ground, I would have had better opportunities to look back for kills, get refreshes, and maybe even pop the med kit. So in this next late game, this is where my tournament kind of took a downfall. I was in such a great position to win this game. I had max mats going into the first moving zone on front side but I left myself on a terrible lair. I was all the way on front side. We were going right towards the building. I should have simply gone over top of the building. My first instinct was to run right into it and go through it. I thought that'd be the safest option, but there were so many players around me that I never had a chance to break into the building. And then I got trapped. If I went to my left, right, above, below, there were players on all sides of me. So I could have simply avoided this by going up a few layers to start this rotate. There was no reason for me not to because I had so many mats. So yeah, I should have planned that rotate a little bit better when I saw we were going right into a building. I should have gone up because I was on front side of zone. So yeah, that's the general idea. You know, you want to find big mistakes that you made that could have made a difference in your late games. And then for early and mid game, it's just the stuff I talked about before. Hopefully this video helps you get on the right track for your cash cup next week, gives you some confidence going into it. Just gotta remember that these cash cups are all for fun, all for improvement. The reason I play them is not to make money, it's just to improve my game and get me ready for potential solo FNCS next year or maybe even World Cup. But hopefully this video helped you out. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, use code JiveNTV, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.